TorahCafe.com. mentioned yesterday, for those who were um, at the Hoshkofa presentation, that in uh, putting the word Darkoi under the microscope, so to speak, what's revealed is part of Darkoi is going, is, is introducing anything that's new to the child when they're ready. Do you agree that if I do it too early, the child might feel pressure, noticing that others are doing this and they're not ready for it, and therefore I'm not really going Darkoi, I'm not going in his lane, I'm not going in his way, I'm not going in his direction. Does, this make, does that make sense? Um, what happens if I, if, I, if I do do it when he's ready, but I'm going too fast or too slow? Could that also be a part of Darkai? Yeah. So, uh, number one of this is, is the child ready? The child is responsible for revealing that to me, and they will, because when I give a lesson in a specific material, it will be evident, probably within seconds, whether this is registering for the child, whether the child's ready for it. It will be obvious after I've given the lesson, which should not really take more than um, some cases 30 seconds, in many cases just a minute, maybe two minutes to give the whole lesson. And that's why I hope I can cover as much as I possibly can of these materials with you. It shouldn't take more than about a minute, maybe two, where it will be clear to you, reading from the child, that uh, they're clueless or then already, or this is a, too much of a struggle, or that it's within their range of readiness. Is that making sense? You'll s I'm going to play a lot of body language with this. So hopefully, it'll become much more evident, much more clear what I'm referring to. Number three of Darkai is endearment. If I'm not endearing the child to this information, um, I'm not going in their way. Endearment means, chavivistic, it's got to be in a way that the child is looking forward to this, uh, believes that, oh, I'm, I can do this, um, oh, this is enjoyable. Number four of Darkai is Darakai, his strength, his intelligence, his modality, his learning style. We talked a little bit about multiple intelligences, and uh, much of what we're going to see here is spatial intelligence, uh, kinesthetic intelligence, a lot of sequencing, which is mathematical intelligence. Mathematical intelligence has patterns and sequencing in it. Uh, language intelligence, a lot of emotional intelligence, because emotional intelligence is all about the interface between two people, one with another, my trust of the child, my respect for the child, asking the child questions. Uh, Sarila, would you like me to show you the magnetic letters that uh, I saw you watching me do with, with Hanala? Asking them questions, inviting them to do a work, and letting them choose, letting them say, yes, I'm ready, or not, not now. Um, one of the great advantages of a uh, classroom where you've got either workstations or children choosing materials off shelves after they've received a lesson in it, um, is when you're giving a lesson, let's say, for example, to one child. Let's say I'm giving a lesson in, this is one of my favorites, um, Surasa Ice. And I don't, I don't need to even to teach the child yet the name of the ice. We'll, we'll learn the name every day. We'll have on the wall here, sorry I didn't bring it, a uh, large Aleph base all the way across, maybe two or three levels. And we'll sing every morning in preschool, Aleph base, Gimel, Dal, etc., the whole thing. So even though I'm not expecting from this short exercise of singing all the letters. I'm not expecting the children to know all the alpha bases. This is a process, a process of, of osmosis, where gradually the child is learning, oh, when you're pointing to that letter which you are singing, that is the ice that makes the sound you're saying. Aleph, bass, well, not the sound, sound, but in this case, the name, gimel, etc. So that's just an exercise which I call routine and ritual every morning. And there's no expectation that children are supposed to know it based on that. But that's where, yes, they're going to be hearing these oiseus, which means signs. That's what an ois is. It's a sign to the brain to tell the mouth what shape to make with the teeth, the tongue, in order to sound out that ois. These oiseus, these signs, have sounds and names. But what I'm going to do now quickly is an example of what's called sandpaper letters. I had these designed, Alison Montessori in um, uh, Mawa, New Jersey, has them. I can sell them, but I, I prefer you just go to direct glimpse. Uh, it would be less of a headache for me. Um, and you're probably familiar with, with uh, sandpaper letters. Um, these are stick, stick version ones. There are uh, ones that's made actually by Lubavitch. Um, I don't know if they're still in existence. Uh, Jewish Montessori. Are they still in, in existence? I think they sold their stuff to TES, Torah Educational Software. 
Um, but, uh, and that's a very sophisticated font, which is good, it's okay, that's fine. But as an introduction to children when they're learning Aleph base, I much prefer that it's a, a, a font that is simple as opposed to sophisticated. Sophisticated means it's got a whole design to it as well. Um, some children are very literal, which means that when I introduce this as a, a hay, this, then when they see this ice, this is in their mind a hay. But when they see, when they see this over here, it's not ne- some children are so literal that this, this underneath my finger is not, is not the same hay. And in a certain sense, they're right. The font is not exactly the same. But right now, I want this to be the simple font that I will introduce them to. So, Sarlo, you, uh, would you like me to do some sandpaper letters with you? Um, it's very possible that the reason why Sarla is going to say yes is because I noticed that yesterday she came over and watched me giving this lesson to Hanala. And I could read from the corner of my eye that Sarla's body language was showing curiosity, watching for a while, and then going back to her work. So in my mind, I'm saying, you know, maybe she's ready for this. Had she come over, watched for a few moments, and, got, and walked away like that, I probably would not introduce it the next day or the same day. But I'm, ju- I'm not making that a rule. I'm just giving you examples of, of reading children's readiness in their own body language and certainly in their tone of voice. Sala, would you like to, me to give you a lesson in the, the sandpaper letters? If she says no, that's fine. Because what, what does daraka, daraka mean? Follow the child, go with the kid. Um, and that doesn't mean I'll never get to this. That means that I'll watch what she gravitates to so that if, for example, I'm going to get to this still, if she's gravitating to, let's say, uh, the easel, and she's constantly with crayons or paint, um, painting pictures, I don't have to pull her away from there to teach her ICS. All I have to do is, um, sorry, Lena, I see you love uh, working on the, on the easel. Um, I want to make some boxes in here, and could you choose three of these cards over here and, and, col- and color the same shape for me? So I don't have to take her away from what she's good at, or what she gravitates to, I can have her in Darka do what she's good at. If it's a boy, often they'll be playing with the blocks. Uh, with, and hey, that's great. I'll just, I'll just ask them, choose three cards out of here, and could you make me these shapes? So they'll make a shape with, uh, with the blocks. And hey, presto, if I'm putting, I'm putting this over here, for example, let the kid go in their way. I might even take a photograph of, of it for them and uh, include that in their portfolio, in their album, or in their, their, uh, their work um, envelopes, etc. But the, the lesson I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to go through this very quickly, but what I'm asking you to understand and appreciate is that um, the more modalities, the more senses, sensorial, the more tactile, the more kinesthetic, physical, uh, the more visual um, that you are using, the more likely the child is going to get the information in their strength. And because, as we mentioned yesterday, between the age of three and five, ben, ben shalashanim le'oisius, that's where Chazal say a child's ready for the oisius, when they usually get the upsharon, at uh, three years old, they're ready to learn the suasa ice. But they don't have to be reading till ben chameshanim in mikra. And we said ben chameshanim in small print is ben chameshanim shleimim, five full years. So they've actually got a three full year period to acquire language before they're reading accurately and fluently. So that's a great opportunity, according to Chazal at least, that I, without pressure, I can be spending two plus years with lots of materials that are fine-tuning, and this is the key information which we mentioned yesterday, fine-tuning in the mind shapes and sounds. Because that's what language essentially, in its skeletal definition, is shapes and sounds. And the more the child is being mavchin, discriminating, discerning, distinguishing, subtle differences in shapes and the sounds of the Isis, the more they are prepared for accurate reading and fluent reading later on. Is this making sense? And the more you introduce them to different fonts of the same surasa ice, the more their mind is able to identify that the essential surah is the same, but there's a, there's a slight adjustment in the style. So this is an essential surah of the ice hay, and a slightly more sophisticated version would be, I won't say sophisticated necessarily, but um, a little bit more stylish, if you want to use that word. Oh, these are not in order. Sorry. Oh, it is? Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Uh, visually strong there. So here you've got the hay. Can you see 
that even though for you and I, uh, we can't really almost see any difference, but if you're asked, um, is this, and this is the question I will ask a child if, if I'm concerned about confusion, this is the exact words I will use. Um, is this hay, and this hay, is this hay exactly the same as this or slightly different? Right? And I want the child to answer. And whatever their answer is, guess what? It is correct. Because both are correct. If you tell me it's basically exactly the same, that's great. Um, I'm going to move through this very quickly. But let me, let me first give you this lesson in the sand le sandpaper, um, sandpaper. Sorry, you, I read it. And she says, yes, I would, I would love a lesson in the, in the sandpaper letters. So here's our sandbox. I'm going to... Shake it so that it's pretty full there with sand. Uh, uh, can you see? Yeah? Are you f if, if I uh, move it at an angle, the sand's going to go down. But do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah? It's a sand? Sa okay. If this is too messy, for the boys, this is, uh, it might be more messy. But for girls, they, they can learn to be more careful. But if you're, if you're worried about it, then uh, rice it also works. As it caves in more easily. But sand is much better for the exercise I'm about to show the child. I'm, sp I'm saying much more words than is necessary for our sake, but for the child, the less words, is, this is what Montessori believes in, uh, uh, in my personal experience, it makes a whole lot of sense, especially three to five years old, that while they're acquiring language, they are living much more in the world of concrete, the physical world, so that the less words I use, the more it's easier for the child to focus on the actual information, which is physical, and it's easier for the child to grasp it because I'm entering their world. Their world is concrete. Their world is physical. I'm helping them emerge into language by giving them language to objects, etc. But right now, I'm going to ask Sarala, Sarala, I'm going to trace this with both my fingers and watch what I do, and then you'll, you'll, do, you'll tell me if you're ready to do the same. So I'm speaking to you now. What I would, that, that was all the words I would say to the whole inviter to the lesson, and I'll tell her what I'm about to do and ask her to, if she wants to copy me, if she, if she wants to change her mind, she can. I will always give choices, because I will not give a choice for them not to make any choices. But initially, I want them to make as many choices as they want, so they will gravitate and teach me what they gravitate to, what their strengths are. I can easily move them slowly through the curriculum by mentioning, oh, I see that by the end of the week, we haven't done any work in the, in the letters. Um, do you want to do work with the ones I want her to do, or do you want to do work and find other works, other materials which are working in her strength, whether it's blocks, whether it's easel, whether it's sandpaper. I'll, you're going to see, hopefully, Bez Rashim, a lot of examples. So here's, here's the lesson. I will m trace it with both fingers. The reason why both is because this way, my nerves in my finger ends is going to experience the contrast between the sandpaper part of the, and the very smooth part of the card. This is wood. Do you follow? So I'll trace this twice, and I'll do it with very deliberate body language. So I'm going to, I should have given you, I will create a, a perimeter of the work area. This is a mat. It doesn't have to be a mat, but it's a very easy way to create on a, a light colored mat the perimeters of the work area so you're teaching the mind of the child where to focus. This, is, this becomes the work area, and we never walk across it, work around it. I'm not giving you all the, the lessons in how, grace and courtesy, as it's called, where we would teach the child how to roll up a mat, how to take out a chair, put the chair back, how to move, walk around a, a table, how to walk in a straight line. We put a tape along the floor and have the child carry um, a glass of water very slowly. I will role model it first uh, to the circle of children and uh, walk on top of the... I'm going very fast, though. I walk on top of the tape holding this, and then I'll ask them who wants to have a go after me. So we teach them lots of ways of, being, of controlling their body, um, respecting the different work areas, and then when this is rolled out, this becomes their workplace. This is the definition perimeters of, their, of the work area. So watch my body language. I'm going to deliberate. I'll have to do it twice to get both ends of the classroom. I'm going to focus on this. I'm just focusing, and my eyes are completely on this, and then using what's called the, the law of recency. Recency means while the nervous system has just traced this particular surah, this shape, and my, my brain is receiving a message from my fingers as to the shape, I, shape I've just traced, go straight to the, the sandbox and trace it inside. And I'll show approval of, of my work, 
and then when I'll shake it up, do you follow what I've just done? Yeah, I, I, the people in the back, it's a little bit easy, harder to see. I'm trying to hold this at the best angle I can. Do you follow what I'm saying? We, we traced it in here, the hay, and then I'll, I'll shake it up, and I'll ask, sorry, Salah, would you like a go? Now, if Salah is ready and she wants, guess what? This lesson didn't need to take more than maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute at max. Is she ready to go and trace every single ice? Essentially, she's just, she's, just received, she's just received all the information she needs to be able to go and do this on her own. I'm not teaching the name, not teaching the, sh the, 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 the sound. I mean, some say you don't, the osis don't really have sound, it's only the nukuds, but we'll get there another time. Uh, but essentially, in a matter of 30 seconds or one minute, I've given enough information that she can be busy here for a long time. Does this make sense? I may not want her to, to choose the whole thing. I just ask her, would you like to choose three? And if I see she really gets to it, she really gets into it, maybe I'll, uh, I can tell if you would, jo would you like to do some more. But th there's no uh, pressure here where the child has to prove how much she can or he can carve it in any amount of time because there's lots of materials for the child to get to uh, which one can either create or buy. A lot of these are actually bought, some are, uh, you'll see are, are actually made, where you have the child engaged in lots of different activities and the essential point of each activity is just another way of doing Chazara, review. Remember yesterday, the first step is Matana, Matan Terra. Second step is review of the Matana. This is a hay, this is a Vav, this is a Gimel. And then have them do Chazara, lots of review in different ways, modalities, intelligences, learning styles, etc., so that they can get to stage three, which is the Kenyan. They master it. And they're able to identify a hay in every different font, an Aleph in every single font. Is this making sense? So, um, th this, this comes um, also with vowels. You can do it with the vowels. Um, I'm just, while I've got this work out, I'm going to quickly show you. When we do blending later on, one of the ways we do blending is I'll take the hay. I'm going to do this in the air, but I'm going to ask you to pretend it's, it's, it's horizontally laid on the mat. Um, and I would say, hey, sorry, ha, ha, hey, ha, hey, hey. Hey, it's more effective when you see the contrast of the, them coming to meet, and it's only at the impact moment that I will actually make the, co the correct combination. Do you follow? I think hey may not have been the best example. Maybe gimel is a bit better because it's got a g, it's a bit of a stronger sound, especially it's guttural. So g, a, hey, g, a, hey, g, a, hey, gay, right? Well, maybe it's not the right one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, <laughs> let me share with you the following. This chart here is a very simple chart. Um, there are many ways of doing this. If you think that it's too, again, I'm not teaching yet the names. The names are getting every single day. They're hearing the name again and again, right? So they're getting that by osmosis. Eventually what's going to happen is that the children, by doing a lot of chazara, lots of exposure to a very rich environment of physical materials reflecting Aleph base and the Nakudais, what's going to happen is the children will make the connection of which surah has which name. Oh, that's a base. Oh, that's a dalet. That's the end of chaf, etc. One of the ways to uh, help children be mavchin, discriminate, and build their ability to clearly notice subtle differences in shapes, which is what the oisius really are. The surahs of ois is a shape, and some of the shapes are, are a little bit too similar for some children. And we want that, those some children to really get the havchana, the distinction, the discrimination. So one of the ways to do this is this chart here. It's a very easy chart to, to buy. I actually made this one myself, but uh, you can buy similar ones. And it's simply matching work. It's not that complicated. And it's amazing how, especially boys but girls as well, will re they can spend a long time on this, literally weeks and weeks. I don't mean hours every day, but coming back to it again and again and again. And that's darkai. The child is going through a process, a process of making lots of connections in their mind. We spoke about this yesterday. Chalush badatai does not mean weak in the mind. It means the connections are weak. They haven't finished strengthening the connection between the shape of one ice and another in order to understand each one has its own surah and name and then its own sound and the the kudah that goes with it will adjust the the sound is that right so that they're ready for reading is this making sense so far so for example um Hanala, would you like would you like a lesson in um in the shapes of the letters using the yellow chart oh i saw i saw Hanala do that yesterday yeah uh, i was watching for a long time 
I know, I was wondering, that's what, that's what made me think you might want to uh, have a go. Yeah, yeah, I would love to try. Okay, good. And then the rest of the lesson is total silence. Total silence. Um, usually takes about 30 seconds. In your case, it'll take me 10 seconds. And I will exaggerate my body language. Again, children live in the world of physical, concrete. They're retaining language. They're, they're learning vocabulary to associate to the physical world they live in and all the concepts that they are exposed to. Ideas such as, Daddy loves you. Um, oh, I, I enjoy shopping. The, the, enjoying shopping is, is a concept. But as the children hear the word enjoy and they see how much mommy says it with passion, eventually it starts to click. Mommy has... Uh, no, from going shopping, right? So, not all mothers do, but they understand what I'm saying. So, but in, in the world of the physical, I will deliberately exaggerate my uh, body language somewhat in order to pronounce what I want the child to see. And what is it I want the child to see? Watch this. Let's choose, I think I'll start with here. Okay, for, here's the silent lesson from here on. Yeah. Here, this is a dalad, okay? Like, I think I'll, I'll try and do this at an angle, so you could, but pretend it's lying down. Um, it's okay, I think it's okay. Uh, I've done about 12 seconds. Are you getting the point? Now, watch, watch my body language as I get to... So I'm, I'm slightly exaggerating deliberately. So I want, what is it that I'm trying to say with my body language, which is very loud? It's much louder than words. What am I trying to say when I'm, I'm looking curiously, trying to figure out is it matching or not? What am I really saying in my mind? What am I saying to the child? I, I'm, I'm trying to help the child see that I'm discriminating in my mind, trying to make a, a decision. I'm going through the process of clarification. I'm tr going through the process of comparing similar Com and contrasting the differences to come up with the kind of thing which one really matches. Uh, Did you say the dollars? Did you start off by holding when you pick up that card first? Do you say dollars or you don't say anything? Um, I'm not making a rule out of this, but right now my goal is not the name of the ice. I'm letting them get that right now by osmosis. Um, there's, uh, as the year unfolds, there's going to be a lot of ways to give the name to the ice. Um, and over here, if I see that Hanala, Darakar, she, she's really ahead of herself, and I see that when she's singing other face, it looks to me from the eye contact, or when I give the children turns to hold the laser, uh, laser pen or the, the, the stick that points to the letters, I see she's really into this. So I'll ask her, um, do you want me to say you, tell you the name at the same time? Or if you feel, feel you just want to volunteer, because that's the way you want to teach it. So I say, oh, this is a Dalit. Can you say Dalit? Dalit, good. And then, then goes the rest of the silent lesson. So I'm not taking away from that as a child. Uh, um, right now, I'm focused much more on shape. I'm interested right now in, and the reason why is very simple. Because when a child reads, they're not going to be reading the actual names of the letters. So in the essen essential uh, skill that the child needs to acquire, it's actually the tsura and the, the, sh the, the sound it's going to make with the nakuda that is actually going to help them with the reading. So the fact that they know the names, which I do, I agree is important and valuable, but that's not the, the first goal over here. Okay? Um, if you feel the kid's ready, go, go for it. I'm, I'm not crazy about that because I don't want the child to feel that there's more than, I'm, um, more than right now than just a surah. So um, what, if you feel that the child, this is too overwhelming, then I will cover, let's say, three lines, and I will just pull out of here the seven, in cases eight, eight oceans because of the vase. I will take the eight oceans that match here, mix it up, and then I will do the matching game. If uh, in some cases, um, I actually did this just for travel purposes. I cut it up like this. But you can, try, you can cut it into strips or into smaller, and then they can pull these out and spend as much time as they want working with these. Uh, it happens to be just for practical reasons. I usually um, stu uh, glue to a, a hard board, not a very heavy one, usually from you know, staples, the different uh, backings that you can get so that it's, uh, it's got a, a more lasting effect. Is this making sense? So, oh, next stage. So, um, how does a kid feel, by the way, when they finish matching the whole thing? 
And so it's a great, it's a great feeling. And they might want to do that a few times till they realize that the, the mastery is really serious. Now, what would be a next step for this? What would be a next step for this? They, they matched it perfectly. This, this essentially is really two sheets. One becomes the control chart, and this becomes cut, and another sheet I just cut up and create the cards out of. What would be a next step? Different color card, different color card different and different font. So we'll, we'll take different, the same, exact same, and have them match out. Do, are you, follow? I don't want to give the whole lesson now, but I'm asking you to, uh, to do you follow the, yes. great. Here, this, this, one, this item you can buy. Are you, uh, has any of you seen this? This is a control chart for, for all the sticks, colored sticks that you'll find in here that will allow a child to make the shapes of all the ISIS. Again, these are stick versions, which is, it's simpler. There's no serious font over here going on, so not sophisticated. Uh, yeah, I didn't create this. I, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about putting the word in English there. I much prefer, it's just the, the surah sais. So that let's say you're, you're, uh, you're choosing, let's say, the yud. So here's my work area. Maybe I would, leave, I would put these all out nicely, not in any, any special order. Um, Chaim, uh, do you want to choose uh, one of the ISIS that you want to make? Uh, I, don't, I don't mind which one. I can choose one. Okay, I see you chose the race. Okay. Um, can you, you could, it's, it's really, you know, again, it's, right? What, what, what you're up, what, what you fill the kids up to, yeah? Uh, do you know the name of this? And he might say, uh, shall I tell you the name? As much as possible, ask them questions. And the reason why we didn't get into this in full in the previous presentation about middas, but the most powerful way for anyone to get anything is by them buying as opposed to it being sold to. And one of the most effective ways of having a child buy and employ their own Bahira is ask them a question. Um, do you know what, what name this has? Do you know the name of this ice? Would you like, shall I tell you? Okay, so you're always asking them questions, giving them a chance to choose. Um, let's say he chooses the race, so I'm just going to quickly role model this. Hmm. I think it's meant to be orange. Hmm. Okay, I'll show that I'm, I'm happy with, with what I've made over here. Um, what happens if he, he makes a dalad? That's not bad news, that's great news. You know why? Because, well, he's, he's, uh, if he's making a dalad instead of the, the resh, so he's teaching me he's not, that he's not making that distinction. Great, you know what we'll do? I will not judge him, I will not, uh, not, make, I will not correct him. Instead, we'll go to another work. He, make, he can continue with this, but I'll go to another work, which is this. There are quite a number of, of isis which are mukhlafim. They easily get confused. Kaf, kaf, um, base, base, pay, fay. Some children make, uh, uh, make up, mess up mem tes. Sorry? Uh, 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 end of mem. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, let's say, for example, hey and ches. So, what have we got here? As, as I'm sorry that it's so difficult to do this um, at an angle, but I'm going to... Actually, I don't like that one. <laughs> it's really confusing. Here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's, it's twelve. Okay. There's twelve. There's twelve cards here. It's really two sets of um, hays, all different fonts, six different fonts of hay, six different fonts of ches. So what you want the child here to do is to match them, right? So it's going to find, uh, make a pile of all the cheses. Do you follow? And all the haze, so that he's showing me, he can clearly see the difference between the ches and the hay, right? And then the same with the other the other ones. Um, if a child if a child is is really making um, really confusing them, so he puts this together in the same pile, hay and ches, I'll ask him, uh, Moshele, can you can you tell me, are these exactly the same or slightly different? Oh, can, uh, sorry. Yes. I'm giving. Yeah, I'm giving him the. Op I'm giving him a menu because I don't go. I'm help. What am I? I'm not. 
I could, I could say, Moshe, Moshe, this is the Ches, and this is the He. Okay, can you see the difference? Now, I can do that, but then I'm selling. I don't want him. Uh, but what I do want to do is direct his mind and help him reveal to me if he's still confused after I give him this menu. So, Moshe, can you t- can, uh, are these both exactly the same, or is there a slight difference? Is there a little bit of a difference? Can you show me where the difference is? Do you answer, what am I doing to his mind? What am I, ask, what am I directing his mind to do? Find, define the difference. What would happen if I just drill and drill? Mashi, ches, hey. Can you see there's a gap there? No gap here. This is the ches, there's no gap. This has a gap. I'm drilling, 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 and there's an expectation in the drill that you should be getting it by now. Do you hear that in the, in the, in the words? And not just the voice, but the words themselves. But whereas if I'm always asking questions, can you, can you tell me the difference? The assumption in the question is, there is a difference and you can tell, right? Um, these are relatively easy um, materials to create on, on a, a Dafka writer or any English Hebrew word processor where you've got a choice of lots of different fonts. Sorry, ma'am. Um, so here's here's a, a great work. It's so simple. Here you've got um, uh, pegs where you've got written on the top and the bottom. You've got printed on it. Here's a yud. And in the basket, you've got Aleph base all the way through. Um, I don't remember. It could be Amazing Savings. It doesn't have to be a bowl like this. It can be, but, but uh, the uh, idea is basically it's not very expensive to create. Um, and if you're getting nice materials, good materials, that's what helps create endearment to the child. Remember, we said we want it to be endearing. Part of endearment is the aesthetics, that they're nice materials, or beautiful, or colorful. Uh, real is usually better than non-real, meaning wood as opposed to plastic. If you don't have the option, then use whatever you can. If it's not affordable, so you go with uh, the artificial. But the idea here is the child will pick out of the bowl any peg, and now he's got to look for the matching. Oh, there's Yud. Um, by the way, what else is happening when they're doing this? Fine motor, Fine motor skills, which is preparation for? Writing. writing. Uh, so I'm, not, I'm just going to give you that. You understand what to do next. Right? So, but what, what's going to happen? The kid finishes up the whole tray, the whole uh, thing. a great feeling. Um, sorry? Yes, yeah, yeah, they, they'll, they'll, and they'll, they'll invent other things. Um, using using um, magnetic boards, magnetic letters to, I'm so sorry, uh, magnetic letters. This is a magnetic board, and here are magnetic letters. So, um, for example, I will take out, if you, again, that's if you've got two different fonts, Take out, let's say here, you've got a, a saf, a nun, a vav, vase. That's a vav, this is the end of nun. Let's, let's, let's choose something simple for now. Okay, hey. Sorry. So on the top line, I've just chosen uh, five letters at random. This would be the lesson I'm giving the child. And then I'll, and then I'll start searching... Actually, what I'll probably do is I'll take all of these out and lay them out, not in any special order. And now um, I'm going to look for a matching magnetic letter to put underneath it. Do you follow? Right? Uh, you might have four or five of each. And, the, and the, in this particular case, I've actually got a few other fonts as well. Um, this is my large set. I've got a smaller set as well. This you can get from Roebling in Brooklyn. I'm sorry I didn't bring their phone number. Roebling, R-O-E-B-L-I-N-G. But uh, the lesson will take maybe 30 seconds where I'm matching. And I say, ooh. See my body language again? I'm looking for a non. What's happening in my mind as I discriminate? I'm asking you to, to visualize this in your mind. I've laid out all the letters neatly in, in rows over here. And, and in doing so, when I'm searching for the matching ice, what's really happening? Review. It's review. I get free Hazara just for the fact that I'm searching for the right ice. Is this making sense? Well, kids get bored, though, that know it already. This should be your very young children. You're, you're right. As soon as a child shows that they got total mastery and they, and, and they say, oh, I don't want to do that, that's fine. I'll, because it's not challenging, great. Let's go to the next level. 
right? So for example, I'm just, right now I'm just giving you lots of examples where it's more of the same, but it's in different ways, right? So that a child would otherwise have been accused of having a certain learning disability or slow in some area, it may not even surface because they're learning the same information in one of their stre- another strength. Yeah? Okay, so moving forward, one of my favorite... What would be the next step? Yeah. How would you bring forward the next step? N- uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Once, once, I'm help- once the children are showing me that they know that this, this is a... Um, let's say... This is a mem. They tell me it's mem. This is a lamad. This is a hay. Right? So what I would do, I might go to something like this. Uh, this is not right. I, sh- I, I, I should have one material out at a time. Um, I've got a shin. Here's a shin. Hmm. Do you remember what name this has? Good, shin. Um, which sound does shin make? A sh sound. Okay. Can you find me something in here that has a sh sound at the beginning? Yamulka. Yamulka. Y. Sh. Y. No. Sidor. Sidor. Sh. Right? Shaifa. Sh. Shaifa. Right? So I might put the shin on top of the shaifa. Right? Just have the kids working with physical materials where you're engaging them at the next, the next level. A, 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 a similar work or material as this one is as soon as uh, a child um, is, is ready to identify the beginning letters of words which... The, you see, the advantage of using something they've already... They already know the yarmulke. They're using these words in their vocabulary. They've got hundreds of words in their vocabulary. Hundreds. So um, by, by introducing physical objects which are real... And then ask them to, ooh, where is my, okay. This is a beautiful olive base. I didn't have time to unwrap all the, but uh, it's three-dimensional. It's made of wood. They're, they're very beautiful. It's not that expensive. It's about $45, very long-lasting. Alison Montessori. Alison Montessori. A-L-I-S-O-N Montessori. M-O-N-T-E-S-S-O-R-I. Montessori.com. Uh, if you want their phone number, I can give it to you afterwards. But the uh, idea here is um, um, I will lay out several of these. And then this is the, again, most of these lessons are silent except for the few words that I'm saying that's part of the lesson. But no, I'm not explaining anything to the child. You I'm explaining so we know how to, how to give the lesson. But um, I will lay out, let's say, four items on the work areas to find where they're working. And then... Shaifa, shaifa, sh, shaifa, shin. And then I will not bring this to the table necessarily. I'll have this on the shelf. Now I go... And I start looking for a shin. I'll bring my, the child with me. And as I'm searching, what's going on in my mind? Chazara. Because I'm, I'm reviewing the shapes of the letters and its beginning sound, so to speak. Oh, here's the shin. And I'll pull out the, the shin. I'm sorry? One, two, three, four, five. They're not magnetic. They're beautiful wood. They're, they're painted on one side. So I bring the shin, and I'll place it underneath shofa. Yamuka, yamuka. I'm exaggerating the y sound. Yamuka. I go over there. Look. What should I look for? I look for a yud. Okay. And I'll bring the yud and place it out. And when you see it all nice, samach for siddur, besamim, besamim. So the, as the children are ready, you can, you can go further than this and actually start actually spelling out the um, the words. I'm not up to that now. I'm, there's lots of material still to cover. Is this really completely relevant to this? No, I will not correct the child when they put a sin for Siddha for the simple reason that um, they're correct in terms of uh, the, the rationale. I do not, this is not about correcting the child right now. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not up to spelling. They got the correct sound. What I will do the following is, uh, is the following. Um, I'm going to ask you in your imagination. Can you see a whiteboard here? Um, 
on the whiteboard, I will place these magnetic letters. Here we've got a sin. And here's the sin, pay, vav, etc. So I'm going to ask you in your mind's eye to see that in the classroom, I've got this whiteboard. And I used to do this in Parsha time for preschool. When I would teach Parsha at preschool, I would use Parsha as a, an excuse for increasing our vocabulary, both in English and in Hebrew. But I'd also use it mostly as a pretext, a platform for teaching Aleph base and their sounds. Okay? When I say sounds again, I'm not referring to the Nakutas right now, but the sound that the essential ice makes, except of course Ayn and Aleph. So what I would do is, um, let's say I'm up to, uh, we're learning about Avram and Sarah. S Avram and Sarah. 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 Which is the first ice in the name Sarah? Right? So what I'll do now is I'll play a game. I'll go, zzzz. can you see in your mind's eye? My finger is going zzzz, around the board uh, slowly. And the, I'm expecting the children will sh sh uh, scream out, Sin, right, uh, when, when my finger lands on the sin, right? So if a child lands on, tells me Samach, great. She's not wrong. I will pull out the Samach because it makes that sound. Hmm, Sarah, Sarah. What's the next sound in Sarah? Ra. Oh, which ice makes a R sound? Oh, it's a Resh. And we'll go through, put up the Resh. Now watch this. If a child says, I think it's a sin, not a summer. I'll say, hmm, how can we check? Oh, I know. And I'll pull out a chumash. I'll say, no, there's a parsha called Chaye Sara. So let me have a look. And I'll open up Perak Haf Gimel and look up. Oh, Vayu Chaye Sara. Oh, it's a sin. Oh, thank you. It is a sin. So I'll take the, uh, sorry, yeah, I'll take the summer out and put the sin in. So this is a way where I will not make the child wrong and I'll show them that I'm not afraid of making a mistake and that we'll, there's a way to check. Of course, I'm going to help them show them how, but this is a way to help them not fear that uh, there's a mistake. Not, I'm not going to make them wrong for that. Yeah? So I gave you the answer, but I'm also uh, giving you a new activity. This is a great activity to have. Uh, it can be on a smaller board. I, didn't, I did have one here before. A small white board where you play this game and uh, you can do it with Haman, Avram, well, that's a silent letter, um, bias. There's so many things you can do. And what I've, ha I've had girls especially in recess, what they would do, they would go over to this board and then they would pull out the letters and they would start forming the names of their family. Right? And there's so, so many things you can have the children do if you've got lots of materials that enriches their opportunities for getting the oisius and eventually to the nakudas in their way. Is this making sense? Yeah. Um, here's, here's a great activity. This is actually already in the Kudos. Uh, one lady was saying, oh, this is a beautiful way to get it. Here you've got, again, uh, um, pegs. These are nice plastic pegs. And at the top is, an, uh, is, is a, one of the Nakudos. I haven't taught the Nakudos yet, but I'm just giving you an example where uh, what the child has to do... Very naughty of me. I'm breaking my rules. Let's put this work away. This is for your sake also, so that you, uh, uh, you see a clean area, you know what to focus on. You can see it's confusing when there's more things in, than needs to be there. So here are the three items that are part of this work. And um, here I've got a Pasach. Not this, but right now, even, even before the child may recognize this Pasach, you can see the Pasach up there. Here, you can see the Nakudais on the top of the peg. Yeah. What the child has to do now is pick up any one they want. Here they picked up the hirik. And now I will lay out all these little beautiful marble stones, which each one of them has one of the nakudais on. Do you follow? Here's a segol. Seire. So what does the child have to do? Pick up the one that matches this. Um, ooh, ah. Not so easy. And I can always check if I got it right, because in the box is the chirik, right? So I got it in the right compartment. So th this is a, an endearing work. It's one that uh, is colorful. And if it's done when the child is ready, they are learning to be mavkin the different shapes of the nakudais. Um, I, haven't taught, I haven't given you lessons on how to teach nakudais. So I'm going to get to that, Bezvar Hashem. Is this making sense, right? U using their body. 
Um, here's a work. This material here is matching work. You're talking about when they make mis when they can't tell the difference between two letters. So in each one of these, there's a, a choice of a tough and a saf. One is gold, one is black. So here's a gold saf, and they're going to have to look for the black one. Oh, there isn't. It's not even. Oh, here it is. Sorry. So they'll match this together, the gold one and the black one. Lay it down neatly there, and I'll look for. Oh, I found the tough and the tough gold and black. Lay it out. Do the same with the shin and sin. Hmm. I'm happy with that work. Okay, good. And if if the child's up to it, they can record it. If they're up to handwriting, we haven't done much. <laughs> I haven't done anything on that yet. Um, and the same with all the other ones. These are materials which are relatively easy to make. You can buy the sponges and the and the. Oh, it's just it's all work. I know it's all work. But once it's done, it's it's it lasts for a long time, and it's a lot of uh, a lot of work the kids can can spend working on these ideas. Is that clear? Um, oh, this is a great work. Kids love this one. Love this one. Um, this is, this is a, uh, I forget the name of the, these strips. The, it comes like this, and then you can cut it in any shape you want. Plywood? plywood. It's very, yeah, it's, re, it's plastic, like, it's fo foam plywood or something like that. So on here, you've got these little, little foam squares on which you put stickers of the olive base. I see that Zion is missing. So this is laid out here. Over here, uh, each one of these is color-coded to the same colors as, as these squares. And you've got all the oasis on them. So we'll put them all facing up, not necessarily in order. Do you understand what I'm, uh, as I'm describing it? Is this making sense to you? Okay. And now I throw this 10-dimensional die. I'll throw the die, and it landed on an aleph. Okay, so now what I have to do is look for the aleph. Oh, I found the aleph. And, and I'm speaking out loud. Really, I wouldn't be doing that when I'm doing it with the child. And I'll, I'll place it on top of the aleph. Now, I throw it again. If you want to work this with a pair, you can have it with two kids, or I'll, work, I'll do back and forth with the child. It landed this time on a zion. Oh, great. I, don't have the, I have a zion here, but the zion fell off in there. Good. Until I finish the whole thing. So interestingly, it's amazing how a child could do this again and again and again, revisit it, um, and not get bored until they really feel, I'm, you know, I've mastered this, I don't need to do this anymore. No. Um, we had it made, it's, uh, you can get it in Taramasura on Coney Island. Uh, sponge letters. You've seen these, I'm sure, for cooking letters. Uh, these are great for playing with. Uh, where I throw the throw a, a die, um, and now you can you could do so just a little bit of creativity. So many activities. It lands on a zion. Uh, Sarala, could you find me five different zions from the shelves? So she might go to the uh, movable alphabet, as it's called. She might take one of one of these out. She might take a sponge and and lay them across. Good. Would you like to choose uh, another one? So, you know, just ha have them doing lots of work in different ways with the same, same information. So that eventually they get total mastery and they're ready for the next level, which would be Nakudais. One, one of the ways that... Um, are you ready for Nakudais? Yeah. Okay. I'm I don't want to... Okay. Look, this, I really want to share this with you. I didn't... I don't have the right one here, but this is, this is a great math material. But I'm going to ask you in your imagination. What we did was we took this math material, we bought it. It's not that expensive. It was about $10, something like that. And we, we put stickers on top of these, Aleph through, Tess, and then we bought another one. So it went Yur Till, and then we till finished the whole alphabet. Then what we did was we took the same die that I showed you over here, right? And this, this particular work is for throwing a, a regular die, or it landed on one. So the child has to lift this up, right? And he throws it again, or his partner throws it again, until he finishes the whole thing. But in doing it for the alphabet, it's exactly the same idea. Oh, it landed on Vav, so uh, we would pick up the Vav, which would be over here. If you're doing Gematri already, and I've, I've got some kids doing Gematri in uh, preschool. And I don't want to get into that now. I've got kids doing uh, multiplying three digits in their mind by the time they finish uh, preschool, because they're learning with um, uh, concrete math. Um, in most of the schools that I've trained the preschool, um, they're reading bef at a higher level than first graders. I'm not saying that to impress you. Rabbi Zalman Goldstein, Yossi Goldstein in, um, 
in uh, oil, oil tar, yeah, to call them. Don't take it from me. Uh, there's a rabbi, Engel, in Toronto. Um, he said, out of the 303 Shrashim cards, which Bezwar uh, Hashem, I'll show you soon, out of 303 Shrashim cards, over here, which um, I mentioned yesterday, if you know 197, it's really round off to 200, you can access 13,000 out of 16,000 words in Chumash Bracious. 16,258 words in entire Chumash Bracious. You actually only need to know 200 Shrashim because their frequency of uh, reappearance in the Chumash is such that if you know these 200, you can access 81% of Chumash Bracious. That's 13,000 words. Is that a good deal? So we've created a photograph for 303 Shrashim. Um, uh, ask Zalman, uh, Rabbi Zalman Goldstein and uh, his brother, who, uh, Menalim in two different yeshivas, I think, in Crown Heights. Uh, Rabbi Engel in uh, Toronto. They all told me I created a serious problem for them. And here's the problem. <laughs> um, the jealousy that it created amongst other teachers because their preschool children are reading better than first grade. And the reason why, and it's a very interesting concept, such an interesting concept. If you have a picture, let's say, um, what does a picture speak? A thousand words. Here's a picture of Mayim. So I will tell the child, and this is Mayim, water. Can you say Mayim? Water, very good. On the back, it actually says Mayim and water, but the child's not reading English and maybe not Hebrew either. But they're saying it out, and they know this is water. So guess what happens if your mind already knows from this picture that this is Mayim? Is that going to make it slower or faster for them to actually be able to read the word? It's going to happen faster. So they can go through this set. I've, I've just got one example over here. Sorry? Okay, I'm, uh, it's, uh, it's not as, the mime is not as specific. Right, it's I'm, I'm, in Hebrew, in Hebrew, essentially, I, don't, I really don't want to get into this because it's a whole big machlokas and dikduk, but essentially every single word in Lashon HaKadosh has a two or three letter root. And the, 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 the designation of verbs and nouns is a, a categorization of words, but in essence, every single, every single word in Lashon HaKadosh has a two or three letter shoresh. There are some which have no shorish because they, they, uh, there's no other form other than that. For example, mayim, there is no, there is no singular because mayim is always plural. Um, but uh, may, may as in waters of because it's, it's, it's plural construct. Right, right, right. I don't, I, I, I don't want to digress from, uh, from, from this, but I'm just giving you an example. When children learn a picture for a word, um, it's, going, it's actually preparing them for reading. So um, I've been told, I know this from my own experience, but the yeshivas that are taking this on, in preschool, by the time they are up to first grade, they know up to 180 to 200 out of these 300 shrashim cold. So they'll look at the word and they, they know it outside. They'll look at the word, they'll say what it is, and it's easier for them to then read it. It's also more endearing for them to read it. Um, it happens to be out of, out of these 303 shrashim, there are 39 two-letter words. That's important to know because as children are starting to be mishaber and ice with its nakuda, the first and most easy words for ch a child to learn are two-letter words. They're mostly only one syllable. And therefore, being that it's one syllable and it has another advantage, there's only one nakuda under the first ice, no nakuda under the second. Av, ben, dag, gun. So what's, uh, what's happening is the child only has to land on the sound of the second noise. There's, not, there's no nakuda there to, to add on. So it's an easy... What I will do is I'll have the child um, make, make the, the word dug using the movable alphabet and the kudais, and then I'll pull out, let's say, I think it's 69, 68. Oh, Sarla, you just said a real word. You said dug, and dug means fish. And this is a, a, um, one version. There are several versions of these, the cards. One's a Litvish version. Uh, this is a Hasidic version, as you can see over here. Um, and in the Hasidic version, you've got English and Hebrew and also Yiddish and Hebrew. Um, so there's different versions depending on the culture of the school, etc. But what happens is as the child starts to collect a pile of 39 words that are pictures and also is a word they've actually learnt and they're reading it. And they're saying, wow, I'm reading already. Yeah, reading. And what's, what's happening as you build up 
2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 30, 39 words that they're actually reading. What's going on, which is what we spoke about yesterday, to their relationship to reading? And that's the key. I enjoy. This is not difficult. This is easy. I'm enjoying this. I can't wait to do three-letter words, etc. Is this making sense? Yeah? Okay. The, these, these, uh, these are I sell, jewishinspiration.com or um, uh, breakthroughchinuch.com. I, I have two sets here. Uh, feel free at the end. I brought more cards to, you can, uh, for the information. You can get it from, from the card up there. Um, moving forward. Um, yeah. Um, so how do they actually learn how to read from hearing you say jog and take a picture? They turn it around and look at the words? They can, they can check it against it, but uh, uh, initially I'm giving them a pile of pictures which they have read. Dug, dug, dug. Okay, so okay. they are looking at the word at the same time as the picture, not just hearing you say it and picture. Right, right, right. Uh, I, 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 again, I'm going through this very quickly. I feel, you know what, this deserves a, a couple of days of going sequentially through the materials which match different halakim of surus ice and then the nakudas and then blending. So it's hard for me to do all that... Um, in this one hour, so I'm going to just do what? Yeah, but I'm 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 trying to offer to you the following with a bit of creativity, and I know it's a lot of time creating materials like this. But for example, using the advantage of pictures, which are already representing something the child is familiar with. So you got a sum of uh, uh, sidur. Uh, let's just uh, uh, tell him here's Ches. I'm not actually sure what Ches is referring to over here. Hacham. Oh, thank you. Um, here's uh, end, end, end of the word for Melech. Koi, no, that wouldn't be. Kiddush. Kiddush. Uh, which one would this be? Yad. Okay. Uh, Yayin as in end of Nun. So what the child has to do over here is match. This is Zayas. He's going to find the correct, the correct word over here that has either the beginning letter that's, that's been colored or the end letter. Is this making sense? So you're helping the children identify... Uh, the part of the word, but it's a word that they're already familiar with. Aleph obviously will be for Esraik, right? Um, which reminds me, I didn't do this work with you. <laughs> Here, um, I, it's just a question of, I'm sorry, I'm, I hope that my rushing is not translating into panic for you. Here, this is a great work. You can buy this from TES, Terra Education Software, it was originally uh, designed and created by uh, Lubavitch, uh, Jewish, and, Jewish Montessori. So, for example, the, what these are, the beautiful blue silk uh, bags, beautifully, beautifully embroidered. Inside each one of these are physical objects whose first letter begins with the, the ice that is uh, embroidered on the outside. So, for example, well, let's, let's see what we've got side in Ches. TS, Torah Educational Software. It's a, actually, it's, a, it's not a store. It's a, a warehouse in Monsi, but you buy it on, online, unless you live in Monsi. Yeah. So here you've got a cat for Khatul. And what do we have here? Hamor. For Ashkenazim, Hamor. And for the Sephardim, Hamor. Okay. Here, oh, here you've got Chala. And this is a, a Lulav, right? I'm sorry? You can p- pull out the Chumash words if you want, and, and, or take the ones that are not in, in the Chumash, take them out. Uh, but the, the main thing is you're endearing children by having physical objects. You pull out the object, and then you ask the child to place, place this on the right beginning letter. So, hala, hala, hala. Which, which sound does hala start with? Ha, ha sound. Oh, which ice makes a ha sound? And if you pronounce it like chaf, uh, as the Ashkenazim do, so you'll say ch. Oh, chala, chala, chala. Oh, a ches. So can you find me a ches from the move alphabet? So pull out a ches. I'm not going to take it out of the bag now. Place the ches underneath the ches here and the chala on top. Yeah, you follow? So you, and you do this with all the... Aleph would be for etreg, talf would be for a Torah. These, um, I don't know the technical name, but uh, no problem. Yeah, yeah, please, please. I know uh, flights and everything else. Hundred um, uh, percent. I don't remember the name, but if you call up Torah Educational Software and ask them for their blue silk bags with the matching uh, objects, each one of these, without going through. Some with a list of ideas of what to do with them. 
No, you can call me, or, or you, and there's a, the children will actually come up with ideas. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do. You can have the children uh, create stories out of, out of, you can lay the objects in sequence. Yeah, yeah, you could do, you, you don't have to buy. Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm not here to overwhelm you. I'm here to give you, uh, give you uh, more and more ideas of how children can learn in multiple different ways the same stuff, but getting Chazara in many, many different ways. Because you are essentially a Rebbe. A Rebbe's got many ways. Rav from the Lashon of Abundance. Many ways of reaching different children. Is this making sense? That's fine. A is not a I, I will, if, if a child wants to spell out Dalet, Nun, Kuf, Yud, yeah, that's I'd fine. Like that. Yes. Because it's the same process. Right. So yeah. Put a yes. Like yeah, that's fine. Yes. That's, that, yeah. Um, here's a really, a really good one. The children love this. Here you ta- this is not difficult to do. It's all time. Take a picture of the children in the classroom. Take a picture of each child. Here you've got a little, small little magnet over here. And now, you pull out the... Here you've got all the names of the different children. These are the last names. <laughs> Those are the last names. Here are the first names. Goldie, right? Shira, Honey, Pearl, um, Sarai. Etc. Sh- or sh- Shari, Leia, and um, and the girls who know each other's names. You're not going to do this the first week of school, but uh, in a couple of months they will be. They will have a lot of fun matching with the magnetic uh, surati to the. The kids' picture, the child's own picture, and he's got. They've got picture of uh, uh, all the kids in the class. Do you follow? As, as the weeks uh, uh, um, progress in pre-1A, or really a th- as a three or four years old, one of, the, one of the games we play is after circle time, after circle time, the way we'll dismiss the children, both from circle and at the uh, uh, recess and at the end of the day, is we'll, we'll, call, we'll, uh, we'll play a game, let's say, um, we're going to play a game where whoever's name starts with this letter, is going to be dismissed. How will we play that game? So, Goldie, uh, we're going to you do first. Goldie, could go out, go, uh, uh, turn, turn your face again to the wall. And now I'm going to hide this gimel, right? We'll hide the gimel. When I say hide, you can let it be showing a little bit. So you hide it somewhere in the classroom where it's still sticking out. And then, uh, when Goldie turns around, what the children, what the children will do is they go, they'll say, go, 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 louder and louder as Goldie gets closer to the ice. And if she goes further away, they go, 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 Right? Is this making sense? This way, you're getting, you're getting them to be familiar with the first sound, which is endearing to them. This is their, this is their name. 